subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel Samsung Galaxy S8 is over a year old now just a month over that and the reason I'm actually making this video is because I just find this phone to be such a great value right now and with the introduction of phones like the OnePlus 5T the OnePlus 6 there's a lot of mid-range phones that can be had for a similar price point but they're not flagship level as in the camera as in having things like water resistance and uh, right here you can see that if you go on any of these websites swappa.com you can get this at under four hundred dollars and over here you can get it on ebay for around the 450 mark now yes you are getting in that one plus 5t one plus six category there which does make this a little bit of a tricky decision but remember that those phones are decided to be mid-range flagship contenders but not actual flagship devices as the galaxy s8 was okay so for the price point let's just say that the galaxy s8 is in the mid-range price level right now and if you want it used you can get it under 400 if you find it on certain apps like let go and things like that you might even get it cheaper okay so i'm not going to go on and on about specs we have a snapdragon 835 4 gigs of ram you guys know this already but i want to begin by talking about the body of the s8 and what it's been like it's been pretty great now the galaxy s9 gets a little bit shorter but a little bit wider which means that the galaxy s8 has a more i would say comfortable feel in the hand when you go side to side not in terms of the height but definitely side Side to side so i kind of do like how narrow the s8 feels when reaching a thumb over i really did enjoy that in my use now the body is 155 grams so it's 25 grams lighter than an iphone 10 so that makes it feel maybe not quite as substantial as a phone like that but still premium and very compact feeling in the Galaxy S8 series. Now we do have Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and rear and over time it's held up great. I don't see any scratches on this midnight black model. Now I'm not saying don't use a screen protector. You definitely want to do that. But overall I do like the quality build on this device. It's been beautiful and I think if you get this now it's still one of the best on the market even though it's a one year old phone. So revisiting the display we're talking about a 5.8 inch super AMOLED HDR10 compliant, 570 pixels per inch. Is that enough pixels for you to see on this display? And it's been fantastic. One thing I do want to note is I don't prefer this over a flat display though. That's one thing that the curves sometimes just get a little distracting to me. They do look sexy when it comes to a show stopping looking phone, but they do get a little bit annoying to look at to me versus a flat display, which is more practical in my opinion. Now, if you do hold down this home button right here, you can see that this is a force touch button. So from the lock screen on any Samsung S8 and above, you can just press like that and you'll feel a little vibration. Now the whole screen is not force touch, but that home button is. So overall the display does have the ability to tweak it as does all other Samsung phones. And this phone really doesn't, you know, need to come out of adaptive display unless you really want to get those natural colors. Overall, the display is very good. And especially because it's on a smaller display, when you cram more pixels into a smaller gadget, you have more pixels print. So super high density gives the Galaxy S8, the small edition, a beautiful display hands down. The only thing is, is I kind of prefer a flat display. I wonder if Samsung will flatten out the curves a little bit, make it more like the Note on the S10. We'll have to see. Okay, so let's talk about software. Here's the big one. And you know, a lot of people that hate Samsung, you're gonna see them in the comments. I hate Samsung. I love Apple. I hate Samsung. I love this brand, Google Pixel, whatever. I mean, you know, just don't listen to those comments because these people are just looking from the outside most of the time and not actually using these devices or they'll use one Samsung from the past, way past, have a bad experience and automatically hate the brand. They've actually improved quite a bit when it comes to the software since the Galaxy S8 series, specifically after this Oreo update that this phone just received. So if you do get a Galaxy S8, you will be getting the software Android 8.0 Oreo with the Samsung Experience version 9.0, which makes this phone actually quite quite snappy in comparison to when it first launched. So the software you're getting on it right now is definitely up to date. Uh, it will be a little bit behind when Android P does officially come out for the Pixel series. I think it's gonna take a while for the S8 to get that, but it will, it will eventually get that. 
Now, when it comes to software, it doesn't get as updates as frequently as phones like Apple as we all know, but at the same time, it does get at least one major update for two years or so, and maybe you might even get a third update for this one. I wouldn't be surprised if you do get that, but don't be surprised if you don't get it either. So software is still kind of eh when it comes to the updates, but in terms of its refinement and polish, it's one of the best ever for Samsung because it's definitely a lot cleaner than it used to be. It's not as feature you know, in your face like it used to be. So it's a lot easier to use. And if you do organize it, you can make it very clean like I have done right here. So overall, the software on a scale of one to 10 for me is a solid eight. Okay guys, so for the S8, when it comes to that performance, it's actually very solid as well, especially since the Oreo update, I put the 0.5X animations and the performance is just fast here for the Galaxy S8, even with the four gigs of RAM. Now, coupling a Samsung phone with six gigs of RAM to me gives it a better multitasking experience, like when you go through your applications and reopen things, you know, some things will reload a little bit like that on a four gig of RAM version, but when you're using a six gig of RAM, more things do hold in the background for a Samsung device. So just keep that in mind. On a four gig of RAM version, you don't wanna run like 20 apps at a time. You probably wanna run like 10 at max, you know, just so you can keep everything loaded in the background. But other than that, it's very fast. And uh, sometimes in, in the past software, it would twitch a little bit. It would like have input lag. Like when you touch it, it would just take a second to open. But now on Android 8.0 Oreo, it's very quick. And uh, I do appreciate this performance. It's very good for the Galaxy S8. Now, I don't think it's quite as refined and smooth feeling is like an S9 that just came out. That's where they really refined the software, made it feel a lot more smoother, more like, you know, what the other competitors are doing. But here on the S8 Oreo, drastic improvements make this performance pretty good. So I do recommend it still in terms of its performance levels. They're on point with some of the best on the market. Okay, so let's talk about the battery life on this phone. I mean, it doesn't suck. It's just not a beast in battery life. So like on the plus models where you would expect great battery life, this phone gets good battery life, just not great battery life. So the actual numbers I get is around four hours of on-screen time with the Galaxy S8. You do have these modes that will significantly improve that battery life if you do utilize them, but they do also kind of limit the experience of using this phone. So I don't really ever use those battery modes here for the Galaxy S8. But I think if you're a light to moderate user, this phone never is gonna give you an issue getting through the day. If you're a heavy user, you might have to top off a few hours earlier than a light user would. So before bed, you know, five, six o'clock, you might need to get on that fast charger. You might be hovering around 40%. But if you're a light user, I think you'll finish the day around 40%, 30% on this phone. So. It gets the job done. It's just not crazy going into the second day and most heavy users won't get through a full day with the Galaxy S8, so keep that in mind. So talking about the cameras, this is one of the best aspects of the Galaxy S8. It basically has the same camera as the Galaxy S9 without having the dual aperture. So the S9 just really crushes this phone in low light. But other than that, it's basically the same camera. It shoots basically the same photos as the S9, except for, again, the low light. Now, there is improved software modes like the AR emoji. You have the live focus and things like that on the Plus models. And you do have a couple more easier laid out stuff, but sometimes it's a little sensitive on the S9. So the camera settings are a little bit high here on the Galaxy S8, whereas they're a little bit lower, which I appreciate for the S9 series. So overall, it's a really good camera though. You do have plenty of modes. You can download more and it's a F1.7 dual pixel AF. So it's got that super fast autofocus, just like a Canon camera does have. Anything you point at, it just locks on immediately. Now, one thing I don't like too much is the front camera on the S8, it's just super soft and it just doesn't look that good overall. Now, it does look fine for, you know, a typical, you know, just let me go post something on Facebook or Instagram, something like that, nothing, no, no problems there. But if you really value detail and natural and really nice colors in your selfie mode, you're not getting it here for the Galaxy S8, but they do have some fun sticker modes on this phone and you do have the ability to shoot in 4K 30, not 4K 60 like the S9, but still very smooth with the OIS on board. So overall, the camera is stellar for the S8 and my experience, it's been great. So here's a couple of samples of that camera.
Discussing one thing that I didn't really like about this phone was the audio performance. It's just not that loud from this single firing speaker. Now, again, they improved this, but we're talking about the S8 here if you're going to pick up an S8 after one year. The audio is pretty tinny and it's easy to cover up. Don't get me wrong. You could hear stuff. It's not like you're not going to hear anything coming out of your phone. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you're not going to be super impressed with that audio that comes out of this phone. Now, it is made up by the fact that it does have a headphone jack jack though so overall it's kind of like a 50 50 experience if you want to use it for external audio you're going to be disappointed but you're going to be very impressed that you still have a headphone jack to use all of your existing headphones but not everybody enjoys headphones so it's a 50 50 on the audio for me now the things i've appreciated the most about the galaxy s8 series it has USB Type-C. I think that all phones should adopt the USB Type-C standard here going forward. Even Apple should adopt this, I think, as they're putting it in their computers, but they're not putting it in their phones. So I really would like to see USB-C on all devices, and I'm glad that that kind of future-proofs the Galaxy S8. Bluetooth 5.0 has been fantastic. It connects to devices extremely fast, and I always like having the latest Bluetooth standard. That's great here for the Galaxy S8. Also the comfortable ergonomics. It's been so easy to one hand this phone. Now it's not gonna be quite as easy for everybody. I have a pretty big hand, but you know, even people with smaller hands are gonna find this very comfortable to use. And you do have the one-handed mode, which allows you to bring that display down, which not all phones give you. So that's pretty great as well. You can drop that screen down and make it smaller. I also like the fast charging capabilities, you know, like putting it in the plug, the fast charging plug, very nice to have that included in the box. It charges the phone very fast. And lastly, the IP68, if you do drop this thing in water, has been great. So having that peace of mind with this phone has been awesome. You don't even get that with this latest OnePlus 6 that just came out, which we will be reviewing here on the channel as soon as it arrives in the office. So that's the Galaxy S8 Revisited, but who is this really for? You might be questioning the option between buying this, like an iPhone 7 Plus, some other phone. Just keep in mind that Samsung is all about that hardware game. So like you're getting great hardware here, even now you're getting awesome hardware. It's not that much of a difference from the S9. So you're saving yourself 50% over an S9 and you're still gonna be able to use this thing quite easily for the next couple of years. It should last just fine. Has a great camera and it has IP68 water resistance. So it's flagship level, it's still premium. I think anybody who's looking for a ton of features but don't wanna drop more than like that $400 price point, find one of these refurb, find one of these used in great mint condition. It's gonna be a steal here 